AR-15 upper receivers, lower receivers, receiver extensions, charging handles, and the like receive what they call a Type 3 hard coat. If you actually look at the prints, it refers to this spec, Mel STD-171, which refers to Mel A-8625. And early on in my engineering career, when a customer requested Mel spec hard coat, I just took it for granted that it was going to be two thousandths of an inch plus or minus 20 percent and so i saw the hard coat applied in an in industrial context first before i got into ar-15s and i was a little bit of a know-it-all i guess i still am and i used to run any lowers uppers charging handles parts i can get my hands on up to the anodizers and use an eddy current probe which is a it's an electrical method of measuring the coating thickness it's not mechanical and if it wasn't within 20 percent of two thousandths or between this number and this number i declare it to be crap so I'm gonna to try to lay out a little bit about the process. Anodizing is a buildup of an artificial layer of aluminum oxide. Think of aluminum oxide as the aluminum equivalent of rust. Any bare piece of aluminum will build up a thin invisible layer, but there is a electrochemical method to do this artificially. And the parts go on racks, there's the parts. Hang it in a tank. Then there's a sacrificial cathode. And I believe you put a negative charge here, a positive charge, get like an electric field, right? Um, and you build up a coating. And I'm gonna try to simplify this a little bit. You've got a surface of aluminum and the coating grows like this. This is the buildup and penetration. On type three, it's pretty reliably half and half. And so you get on that two thousandths, which is the default, right? So the spec gives a possible range that still satisfies type three hard code of five tenths to four and a half thousandths when specified when not specified you default to this so you put on two thousandths half of it is above the original surface half of it is below but essentially it has dissolved a thousandth thick layer of an inch thick layer of aluminum to build up a 2000 thick layer. And this is gonna, I'm gonna refer back to this later because when you strip this, and replate it because, I don't know, wrong color, whatever, right? You scratched it up, you wanna refinish it. Now your bare aluminum is a thousandth down the part is smaller, a thousandth of an inch smaller. And that's depending on how you strip it because there's a kind of a right and wrong way. And if you do it the more traditional way, it'll eat the some of the aluminum too. And the deposit is not uniform. And here's what I mean by that. You've got a part this is gonna be a part that's cut in half. And this is a bore, center line of the hole. If you have two thousands here, you're gonna get about one and a half here, down here, you might get one, and so on. And even then you have to be careful if you put the part in the tank like this, in a hard coat solution, the tank is agitated, it's aerated with air bubbles. It's 
It's gonna trap a bubble here, and you're gonna have a bald spot. So, if you strip this with the sodium hydroxide strip versus the acid strip, what's gonna happen is you're gonna keep this in a tank dissolving until you lose two thousands here and two thousands here and here and here and here. And so maybe you had only a thousandth down here. So you had, you know, half a thousandth here, half a thousandth here, but you etched away two thousandths. And built up half and now your new surface is down here. So that's another thing to be careful of. So early on, while I was a know-it-all, I was pretty sure that anything under 2000 was wrong. And it turns out, whether you look at the M16 print or the M4, right? 2000 plus or minus 20% unless otherwise specified. This is what it says on the M16 and the M4 print. So that works out nicely because your access pinhole It's something like 154 minus nothing plus down a half. So you got a range of sizes of a thousandth and a half. And then you're going to build up half a thou, right? Just if you go right in the middle to the thousandth, you're going to build up a half a thousandth per side, right? So the whole shrinkage is one half times two, right, times the thickness. So it just ends up being the thickness. These cancel out. So whatever the coating thickness is, that's how much the hole will shrink on the diameter because it's per both sides. In addition to that, they etch it. So they'll dip it. to. It's like a cleaning and prep method similar to how they strip i think similar to how they strip the part but don't hold me to that and they'll take off about oh, three ten thousandths per side then they'll build back up plus five ten thousandths per side right so that's Two per side, right, times two, that's four ten thousandths, which is just a little bit more than a quarter of that. So, statistically speaking, you're more likely than not, even if you ream this to anywhere in that size, and then you just put this coating on, you get this build up on the diameter, sorry, per side, so the total... That's one half T, right? So T O O four. More likely than not, you're gonna be in spec. When you strip it, what's gonna happen? Well, let's say you do the acid strip which uh, will not attack the aluminum. It takes forever. You end up having to etch it a little more afterwards with the, you know, kind of strip it with the sodium hydroxide method. You're going to lose the loan, but you remove less unnecessary material. But on the outside, if you go with this like commercial, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to tell them, hey, you know what? I want to meet the spec. Yeah, I want the, uh, yeah, I want that proper, you know, 2000s, right? The default. If it's over 2,000 thick, it gets soft. And 
This is difficult, but it's doable. One and one, right? That's your surface. You remove two, right? So you go down here. Now you gotta build up two and two to get back to the same surface. That's four thousandths, soft as shit. So um, if you're gonna strip and replay a lower, it's not recommended by me anyway, that you do it to a lower that has two thousandths coating. But if you meet the M16 and M4, A1, at least the two prints I've seen spec of one thousandths, you can strip it, replate it, get right back to the size you had and you're golden, you're good to go. So let me think if I have any final thoughts here. Um, couple of observations, I guess. Two thousand fifteen stag was two thousands. I was excited about this. I didn't know any better. And um, as it wears in, I got just chunks of it falling off, just a couple of pieces. But it's just coming right off the part, right? You know, bare aluminum. It's not worn. It's just a couple of missing pieces, as well as around the um, on the rail. I got pieces chipping off here. It doesn't like, and it doesn't, doesn't like sharp corners, right? Radius is better if you want the coating to actually stay on. A Geisley, I got this year. That was last year. Geisley, 0006. Eh, it's three quarters at a minimum. It'll work. The guy that locally, that, that strips anodizing off to put on Cerakote, which is an absolutely fool's errand. It's terrible. He says the guys these strip way too easily. He says arrows strip great. Um, in the future, I'm going to test the arrows when I get a chance to use the probe again. But I'm guessing we're probably somewhere in that um, one and a half to two range. That's just a guess. Palmetto State Armory. So around 2015, PSA. 0.0008, okay? I used to think this was terrible. It's right at minimum mil spec. So that's good to go. Missing a one. Um, I called about four anodizing houses. One said it's got to be 2000s and the mil spec print saying film thickness 1000, that they're wrong, that they're thinking build up, right? Just this. Everybody else recognizes that this is the proper mill spec, but they'll put on whatever the customer requires. And again, going to the spec, page 18. This is allowable, right? So if the customer requests it and you give them this, it's type three. And so I'm very curious about a company like Aimpoint, right? So one of the differences they don't talk about much between a T2 and an H2 micro is that the T2 is hard code, H2 is supposedly not. I'd like to get a chance to measure both, but um, it's not a military design. So they just say type three and it could be anywhere in that thickness as long as Aimpoint sends it out with that on the purchase order. Um, Colors, it doesn't dye well. Type two anodizing is a lot easier to dye and they literally, you know, they coat it, they dip it in a, in a, in a tank with a dye and then they, there's various methods to seal the little microscopic pores that the dye goes into. So that's why you don't see a lot of colors and the colors tend to be dark and um, not very repeatable and not as pretty as um, type two anodizing, which is, I got a lot of those decorative, bright red, green, red, or yellow, whatever, um, fittings and things like that. Um, what else? No, I'm going to leave it at that. Just let you know there's like things that affect the process. The deeper in the tank, 
the parts are, the thicker the coating. So if you want to control it precisely, you want to string them horizontally, or you get less parts in a tank. That's if you have like high precision applications, coat to size, aerospace type parts. And, um, oh, here's a huge one, right. So the coating is best applied to a flat surface. You've never seen this on a gun part, I promise you, because they have to blast it to blend the tool marks. And uh, this is good. All right, goes onto the surface, obviously. This is terrible. And this is why the first time I saw hard coat on an AR-15 upper, I said, there's no way, this is a hack job, this is wrong, you know, I close the upper with the lower together, I see rub marks on the lugs. The coating is grown like into itself. I was, you know, I'm not a chemist and I'm not a coating expert, but it was explained to me, the coating is crashing into itself, right? Plus, in reality, the surface, it's more like this, it's like a, one of the energizers I spoke with just today described it as it's almost like aluminum fuzz, aluminum fur, right? So you're like, you know, you rub the parts together and it shines up the coating. And actually what's happening is you're not only busting up some of the tips here, but you're essentially breaking off some of the pieces of coated aluminum. And so that's why the shinier the surface is, you know, the shinier the product, the AR-15 lower, charging handle, whatever, the better it's going to hold up to wear.